guys, it's Cece, and today I'm here to recommend to you some incredibly unique books. I realize that's somewhat unspecific, and these books do come from a variety of genres, but in the past year, there have just been books that I have read that have consumed me with their unique method of telling stories, of introducing characters, and I want to talk about them and celebrate their uniqueness. So I have eight books to talk about, they're in no particular order, and let's just jump in and get started. Also, and I'm pretty sure this comes as a shock to no one, six out of eight of these books have queer main characters. But that's just how I live my life. I mean, I wore a rainbow to film today. It's just on brand for me. Okay, so the first book I want to talk about is The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skrutsky. This is a super unique book that is unique for, like, all the right reasons. And before I explain the actual plot, I'm just gonna give you the keywords of sea monsters and lesbian pirates. That should be enough. I'll explain more, but that should be enough to, to have you totally sold already. So The Abyss Surrounds Us is the first half of a duology. I haven't actually read the second book yet, but I'm really excited to. It is set in a somewhat distant future where pirates have once again begun to rule the waters. To combat this, basically humans have started training these sea monsters called Reckoners, and they accompany regular ships on the off chance that a pirate ship attacks them, then the Reckoner will defend the ship it has been and trained to defend. Our main character Cass is a trainer of Reckoners and then she is taken captive by a pirate ship. It's all so good. There is a female-female romance in this book. It's super fantastic. And I mean futuristic pirates, sea monsters, there's so much to love about this book and it's also one of the more unique books I've ever read. I highly recommend it. Next up, I want to talk about The Dead House by Don Kurtigich. Basically, this book is why a horror told in an alternative format. It's sort of like you've been handed the case file for, like, a situation and you're kind of reading through that case file, drawing your own conclusions and seeing how the mystery unfolds. Now, alternative format is not my only qualification that makes this book unique, because while alternative format is great and it is used less, it is becoming more and more common. This book is unique for its horror elements, it is deeply scary. Its use of dark magic, relying on demonic mythology, and overall this is just an incredibly intricate and fantastic mystery. You start by learning that a school was burned down, people have a lot of theories that it was the main character of the book, but you're kind of slowly unpacking what exactly led to that scenario. There are so many twists and turns. One of my favorite aspects of this alternative format is that there are video transcripts, so you you get this really cool found footage element, which I didn't think was possible to pull off in novel form, but totally works. And overall, I just think that this book is scary and fantastic. Okay, moving right along, I want to talk about Amberlow by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is a 2017 release that I need people to pay a whole lot more attention to. Amberlow is set in a nightlife full of cabarets, secrets, and a rising fascist regime. This isn't so much an alternate history as it is a fantastical world that feels both historical and deeply relevant at the same time. You follow three main characters. There is Cyril, who is a spy. He's been actively trying to prevent the rise of the One State Party until that One State Party threatens his lover. His lover being Aristreed, who is a performer at the Bumblebee Cabaret. He kind of has his thumb on this underworld of Amberlo and he controls a lot of the back alley stuff that's going on. Kind of an intense relationship if your lover is a guy who works for the government and you spend most of your time at a cabaret breaking the law, but they make it work. And the last perspective is that of Cordelia, who is also a performer at the Bumblebee Cabaret, who just kind of gets pulled into both of these worlds simultaneously. This book is witty and immersive and sexy and just so intricate. All of the characters are super great when it comes to morality. It's just an excellent book and I wish that more people would read it because it's great. Next, I want to talk about Radical by E. M. Cokie. Radical is about a butch lesbian girl named Bex who is a survivalist. Basically, this means that she is pretty sure the world is going to come to ruin sometime pretty soon. Just how she thinks that's going to happen is unspecific, but she feels this really intense responsibility that she is going to have to be one of the people to take care of everyone else when the world falls apart. Honestly, my only reason for this being unique could be that it has a butch lesbian protagonist and that it explores gender identity and gender expression so well, but that is not the only thing that makes it unique. This is a book about a queer girl in spaces and 
relationships that are so traditionally masculinized. It deals constantly with gun politics, with these other survivalists who are, of course, all men. And honestly, it's just incredibly intense. I started this book and couldn't put it down because it just felt so surreal. There are all of these moments where you feel like the book has to be set in the future because of the way Bex is processing things, but it's very much set in the present. It's unique because it's a setting and a character that I have never seen before, tackling issues that I would never normally read about, and it is done so, so well. I love this book. Now I want to talk about Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman. Before I talk about Challenger Deep specifically, I do just kind of want to blanket recommend Neil Shusterman as an author if you're interested in unique stories. Everything that I've ever read by him has been just remarkably stand out unique above other books. Other books by him that I absolutely recommend are the Skinjacker trilogy, Bruiser, The Schwa Was Here. Of course, most people know about the Unwind dystology. He just writes great books. Challenger Deep stands out as one of the more unique ones in my personal opinion. It is a story with two simultaneous narratives. It's about a 14 year old boy named Caden who has schizophrenia. One story is the real world dealing directly with Caden, his diet, diagnosis, his family and friends. And the other story is also about Caden, but he is on a ship that is destined for the deepest part of the ocean. Both of these stories are happening simultaneously with what Caden is really experiencing and the story that's going on in his head. It is a deeply interesting story about mental illness. Like all of Neil Shusterman's books, this is gorgeous, and I highly encourage you to check it out. Moving on, I want to talk about Honey Girl by Lisa Freeman, which I think I talk about how weird this book is every time I recommend it. Honey Girl is set in the 1970s in Santa Monica, California, and it's about a girl named Nani. Nani grew up in Hawaii, but after her father's fatal heart attack, her mother moves them to California, and Nani just wants to fit in with the beach crowd. There are a lot of rules if she wants to become one of the beach girls, and Nani is going to follow all of them. So there's that part of the story with the 1970s and beach culture, especially like girl beach culture, but there's also the fact that Nani is queer and she's kind of recognizing that she has an attraction to Rox, who's the head girl of this beach that she's trying to be a part of. I'll be honest and say that one of the rules of the beach is that girls don't surf, and in a normal YA book, that would be the plot of the book, it would be challenging that and making sure girls can surf, but that's kind of never touched. It's just this really in-depth look at beach culture in the 70s and Nani's identity, losing her dad, falling for girls. So it's weird in that it takes a completely unexpected course in terms of YA stories that I know. Maybe you will love it, maybe you will hate it. I think it is one of those books, but I personally still think about it constantly as one of the weirdest books I've ever read and I really enjoyed it. Second to last, I want to talk about We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. Now, this is the only book I have actually read by Sean David Hutchinson, but basically every book description for any book he's ever written sounds super bizarre, and I want to read them all. I'm especially excited about his book coming out next year, the Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza, I think. We Are the Ants is about a boy named Henry who has had an incredibly difficult year. His boyfriend killed himself a few months earlier, and his grandmother is rapidly sort of slipping away from them as she loses her memory. And also, Henry is pretty regularly abducted by aliens who have told him exactly when the world is going to end, and that Henry has the power to stop it. Thus, the weirdness. I never thought that one of my favorite books of this year was going to be about a boy who is regularly abducted by aliens, but it definitely is one of my favorite books that I read this year. It's my favorite for the weirdness of the storytelling, it's my favorite for the romance that Henry starts to have. It's also, in my opinion, one of the best examples of family being examined in a YA book. There are the really complex relationships between Henry and his mother, his brother, his grandmother, and they're all given such equal time. It's about depression, and it's just gorgeous. This book is pretty dark as a warning and does definitely have some trigger warnings for depression, suicide, attempted sexual assault, but I have my copy just tabbed like nobody's business because I think Sean David Hutchinson has such a way with words. They're gorgeous and this book is gorgeous and I love it. And the last book I want to talk about is the book that kind of inspired this whole video and that is Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. This book came out in September 
please read it if you haven't already. So Jane Unlimited is about a girl named Jane, shockingly. Her guardian aunt Magnolia has recently passed away and Jane dropped out of college and she's just been feeling really unsure about her place in life now that this person that she loves so much is gone. And then an old acquaintance turns up out of the blue and invites Jane to spend as much time as she wants at her family's mansion. Once she gets to this mansion and she meets this incredibly eclectic group of characters and starts to learn all of the secrets of the mansion, Mansion, she is faced with a decision, a decision with five different outcomes that will all drastically alter her future. This book is basically part gothic mystery, part choose your own adventure novel. It's just fantastic. And the thing is, it could be read as a series of short stories. You have your full introduction, but each choice Jane makes starts back from the same place and explores a completely different storyline. We are talking decisions Jane makes send her into different genres. But the constant parts of these stories are dealing with the loss of her aunt, processing what she's supposed to do with her future. She's this really creative person and she doesn't know if that's a thing she wants to explore about herself. She also immediately falls for a girl once she gets to this mansion and that is a thing that is explored in totally different ways in each of the different storylines. Look at how many tabs this book has, okay? Like, I just could not stop marking it up for all of the weird and wonderful things about it, from gothic mysteries to spy thrillers to sci-fi and fantasy and psychological horror. It's one of the weirdest and most wonderful books I have ever read and I just adore it. Okay guys, there you go. Those are all of my recommendations for super unique books that I really think you should check out. Have you read any of these books? Let me know what you think and recommend a few of the books that you have read and loved that are really unique down in the comments below so that we can all get some other new recommendations. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!